Is this America? It's America. Look what you got in America. The wine tasting has begun. It's like juice. The only problem is this is like 15% alcohol. <laughs> so I gotta stop. Yeah, the other problem is you're driving because I've had nine cups of wine. That's fine. I'm done. <laughs> we are Susie and Martin, a couple of longtime Seattle residents looking to escape the rain. So we're heading to Northern California for a few weeks and taking our baby Julian on his first long road trip. In the last episode, we explored the Redwood National Park after driving from Seattle to California in less than two days. In this episode, we take in the renowned winemaking regions of Sonoma and Napa Valley, while stopping to explore some places off the beaten path. Alright, well we drove for about four hours. We made a couple of stops for Julian, but we finally arrived at our destination, so we're gonna check out our accommodations for the night. Oh, there you go. Big smile. Oh, it's perfect. It's like a little studio. Yeah, it's really cute. We've got a little loungy space, we've got a TV, a little fireplace, nice kitchen, and nice big open bedroom, and a bathroom Ooh, with a fancy toilet. I had to book a little bit out of town in Santa Rosa because this was the only place with a kitchen and I didn't even know but there's a washer and dryer too so it's actually quite perfect for family travel. Long day already, <laughs> it's now the end yeah. of the day. We actually thought that we had an additional night in the Redwoods but we didn't so we actually had to leave a day early but it's actually fine because the weather was terrible. Exactly, yeah. so there was so much rain we were getting soaked just loading the car and we just departed and drove for a long time, more than three hours, four hours and a half, through lots of forest and into another kind of habitat here. We're now in Santa Rosa, which is a gorgeous countryside. And check out what's next to us now. A giant Yesterday cactus. Yesterday we saw giant trees. Today, giant cactus. Look at how <laughs> big this thing is. This is huge. <laughs> California has everything. And this was part of the plan. We were never gonna stay entirely in the Redwoods. We didn't leave because of the weather but it came together nicely because now here it's 70 degrees and sunny and it's completely different. We got a sweet room and we're doing a sunset walk. Driving into here, I was observing at what point does it stop being like pine green forest entirely and becomes uh, more Southern. I think that transition happens right around the Mendocino National Forest. It looks like the Northwest until just around Mendocino. There was actually a lot of rain, which is kind of ironic because we keep hearing about this California drought, but apparently we're here during rainy season or when the rains have come back. Legendary drought, it's like a torrential downpour in reality. It's been so wet. It was so wet in the, rain, or the redwoods. But this happened just about a week before we left. It, it wasn't the case. Know, like yeah. coming in. the rain with us. <laughs> yes, from the northwest. Julian once again is exploring a new environment. Mm -hmm. We're lucky with a pretty calm baby and we're hoping to condition him to be an adventurous travel baby. Already he's gotten as far south as here, so yep. that's pretty good. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. It is the next day here in Sonoma and we tried to visit a winery but it ended up being that you needed to have reservations to do wine tasting and to actually go into the winery. So we decided to come to the coast instead which is about maybe a half hour drive from where we were staying in Santa Rosa. But yeah, this coast is just amazing. This is our first stop here. Let me show you what we're looking at. Check out that coast so different from what we just came to from the redwood side but just yeah amazing coastline here and not too many people not very crowded not too too cold look at that rock formation out there all those waves hitting it i need to zoom in a bit well we got chili on the coast and it was great and we noticed something that sounds a lot better a warm Russian restaurant of all things right here on the coast in California. It's called Russian House Number no. One, and we drove by it on the way out. We were like, we need to stop here on the way back. So that's why we're here. And I'm not Russian, but I do love Russian food. You're close enough. Yeah. Let's go. He's decked out in his little outfit. So it's interesting, it says just help yourself and pay as much as you think is okay. So we'll, we'll do that. 
Some kind of soup, it seems. <laughs> Here we go. Now it's more Russian with a lot of sour cream. That's nice. I'm not sure what's in it. But most importantly, the dark bread with butter is my favorite. Russian bread is the best. So much better than any other bread. <laughs> <laughs> Julian is out finally playing. This is the Russian river, so the restaurant is very well situated here. We have Baba Yaga's house on chicken legs here and a teapot, very Russian teapot. Samovar maybe it's called, if I know correctly. We have the flag of Mother Russia here. And I'm not from Russia, but Russia is mother to all. Right here, nice communist signage. The old days throwback. After eating our meal, we wanted to find out more about the restaurant. So I headed back into the kitchen to talk to Lilia, the chef. The owners, Polina, Tatiana, and Tatiana Ginsberg, the best human being in the world. They all had a vision to create a spiritual, cultural, and uh, internal, external development center. And I'm not exactly too sure how this vision came about. I think it involved Burning Man and <laughs> maybe some LSD, I'm not too sure. Apparently there's some volunteers that can come and work here and they actually have lodging or accommodations. It's compact and tiny. But for people who are just like coming through yeah. and don't want to drive four hours back, two hours back. No, oh, it's nice. As you can see, Russian House Number no. 1 isn't just a restaurant. In fact, the menu is completely up in the air and you pay whatever you think is fair. But the real point is to feed your body with more than food. There are puzzles scattered throughout the room and little conversation starters. And in the back, there's even a meditation room. Russian House Number no. 1, was that at all what you were expecting? I didn't have any expectations for this day at all. The day was unplanned. Right now, there are cows up on the hill. Um, but it reminds me that um, you just never know. You know, you, you go and you explore and if you keep an open mind, you'll get into interesting things. Right now, we have not planned anything. We came into California with a completely open slate, clean slate. And day by day, we're simply seeing what's out there. The state is so giant, there's so much here, so diverse, that you can get into things every single day. And we don't need to plan, honestly. We have enough of a travel style that accommodates for that. All that we know is we have a few rooms booked around the state, but that's about it. The only thing we need to plan, it turns out, is visiting a winery. We have to make reservations for that. <laughs> so that's the only thing. After a full day of adventuring, we're back here in our little uh, cottage. And here's what we're up to. So I've been secretly learning to cook off camera because uh, no one can film me when Susie is watching Julian. So on this trip, I had heard in California, you know, there are too many reservations required, too many rules, and it's pretty expensive. So I booked all the rooms to have kitchens. So now I'm cooking cacio e pepe and asparagus here in Sonoma. It should be nice. And if you're curious, here's how the room actually looks once we've settled in. Uh, it ends up being a little tight just because we have so much stuff. We've got, you know, Julian's bed here. He's in his bouncer. A lot of the stuff is his stuff right here, actually. He's got his little play gym right next to the fireplace. His uh, car seat is back there. So yeah, our stuff is all over, but it's kind of nice that it's one big room so we can easily see all of our stuff. And hopefully we don't forget anything because we already forgot things in our last uh, accommodation. So what do we think about my impromptu cooking on the road? It was delicious. I like that it was really fast and pretty efficient. You know, we stopped by Trader Joe's. I didn't go inside, but apparently Martin did. And he said, you know, Trader Joe's in California is so much better than in other states. So we had a lot more selection. And yeah, this came out really well. If you were to get cacio e pepe at a restaurant around here, it would cost you like 30, 40 dollars with the asparagus. Mm -hmm. And then there's chips and tax and blah, yeah. blah, blah. So how much did this cost you yesterday? Uh, 10 bucks. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, Not for bad. two. Yeah. We've got it a whole pot cheap, left. Yeah. yeah. Off to a slow start today because it's inevitable when traveling with a baby that you'll have some sleepless nights. And nobody got a lot of sleep last night. I think it was because we had some black tea that went into the milk, but it's a theory. But it was immediately after that he had hard time sleeping and that meant we didn't sleep much. For context, I've been pretty much caffeine-free for almost a year now, so yeah, it was 
that also maybe was why I had a hard time sleeping. But yeah, neither of us, and no, none of us got sleep last night very well. So we're gonna take it easy today. How you doing, baby? I just woke up from a nap. Somehow this uh, accommodation has flies that get in and it's understandable because we're surrounded by farmlands. But Martin's killed like three of them and now there's a fourth one. Deer. I yeah? think they work to deer. There. That's the wasp a bit. Hopefully. I've never seen anybody kill flies with a paper towel roll. It's always been a fly swatter, but we don't have a fly swatter, so he's improvising. Well, we finished our giant lunch. That was much bigger than we were expecting. We thought it'd be like little falafel sandwiches, but then the lamb shank really drew us in, and now we're really full and actually pretty sleepy. <laughs> yeah, and we only slept like three hours, four hours each or something. So I'm a little jealous of Julian right here. Look at him. But yeah, we uh, drove a little bit outside of town. It got really agricultural very quickly and kind of drove by some wineries. They all require reservations out here. So it's been a little tough trying to get into places, but we found a park, I think it's called Spring Lake here. And it costs $7 to enter. All the parks in California so far are very expensive. In the Northwest, we have so many far parks that are completely free, mm -hmm. but then state parks and so on cost 25 for all of them mm -hmm. for the year and here in california it seems like every park of decent size costs like seven dollars and we asked them for the yearly fee and they said it's something like uh, 60 dollars for county parks for sonoma and 150 for state parks which is nuts yeah it's expensive i mean freaking america the beautiful for every national park in the country it's 80 dollars mm -hmm. so california is charging twice more for the state parks than the whole of the usa is charging for the national parks yeah it's kind of ridiculous they fleece you in this state <laughs> i think i see the lake actually hit it's very muddy. We have better lakes. Sorry, California. <laughs> and we have thousands of them. Yeah. <laughs> that is one of the muddiest lakes I think I've ever seen. I think this is what you call in geography a muddy ass lake. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to find out how this place can be so muddy. And I think I have a theory. A mud typhoon came through <laughs> and covered everything in mud. My real theory is that probably the drought vaporized a lot of the water so the mud was revealed and just kind of spread around, I don't know. This tree here is particularly covered by the mud typhoon. And here the trunk, like five feet up, is covered in mud. It looks like in the video games when you find like a cursed land and everything is all messed up and tarnished. And this is what it looks like. So we asked somebody and they told us this mud is because two weeks ago when this whole atmospheric river came, the lake rose six feet in elevation and this mud was dragged out. This right here is a good spot to kind of demonstrate just how like widespread it is because the path is clear, but on both sides of the path, you can see so much mud. It's just nuts. And you can see, especially from here, it kind of dips down a little bit. So it got really high at this point. I don't know where all that water went, but <laughs> man. You see they got 10 inches of rain and the relay grows six yeah. feet. That's insane. So we emerged from the mud pit and up here it's quite nice, green and lush and beautiful. <laughs> It was actually a pretty steep hill, but yeah, it's really pretty. A lot more uh, green grass everywhere. And actually some houses just down that way. And the path continues, so we'll see where it goes. We're noticing this other lake on the other side is a nicer color. And we've noticed many, many birds in this area. So Julian's been in the stroller for this entire walk, but we decided since he just ate, he needs to burp anyway. So we took him out so he could enjoy the view and stretch his legs a little bit. Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> oh no, he flipped it around. Oh, baby. Yeah. Still a little big on him, but there. <laughs> yeah, we found a nicer part of the lake here. Just another lake, actually. That looks more natural and there are many birds and it's got the sunset color. It's quite nice. You see, he's doing the happy baby. Yep. He's been doing yoga all day long in there. <laughs> We drove out to a nearby winery, so we're going to check it out and see what they've got. I'm going to guess they have wine and I'm going to enjoy it. So it's called the De La Montaña Vineyards and yeah, Martin managed to get a reservation online at the last minute this morning, so hopefully they take us. The wine tasting has begun. 
which I'm gonna have to enjoy by myself because Susie is allergic to alcohol. But this way there's a designated driver, so I'm not being reckless with my family out here on these country winding roads. First one is a Viognier from Burgundy, evidently. It's very smooth. I like this kind of white wine. <laughs> you know that you can't stand it. <laughs> Let's do a quick side by side. Okay. You get the idea between a traditional French Pinot and then more of a California tannins and more mm. complexity type. Mm. Ooh, I like that. It's <laughs> really nice. We finished up the little wine tasting experience, and what did you think? Lots of really good wine. Every time I come to a winery for tasting, the wine tastes so much better than what you buy in the store. I don't know if it's kind of a ploy where they reserve the good stuff, or whether it's just what you find in the store is just lesser grade altogether, and wineries are the ones, like smaller ones, I don't know. but. Um, it's great. It's the first time I did it in California. I'm very happy with it. The grounds here are beautiful, so nothing to complain about. Yeah, not bad for just not knowing anything about this wine region and just picking a winery. It really seems like you can't go wrong. We were actually told to come back in the springtime. That would be a nice time to visit. So we will definitely be back to Sonoma as a whole. So spring might be a really good idea in the future. Yeah, Sonoma is big and there's a lot and it's um, sort of driving distance from Seattle. So we can make it here other years as well. teleported ourselves to Europe and there's a castle behind us which is exciting because I am from Europe and I grew up with a castle view right from my grandma's house and castles are one of my favorite things in the world. So we're here to do some wine tasting or he is here to do some wine tasting. And so. I have to taste for two because they won't let you into the castle unless you pay for tasting. So Susie cannot drink but that way we actually get to drive out of here. No strollers so we had to do some adapting. We're carrying instead. Yes. <laughs> He gets a big hug. Susie's so giving hugs and making muscles. Heck yeah. And we can climb up the stairs this way. It's too unknown whether Ivor the boneless was really boneless and whether he needed to be carried. We got seated into a courtyard, very Tuscan looking environment and reminds us of our honeymoon in Tuscany. But um, this winery is uh, choose your own adventure style. You choose which wines you want. And since I have to drink for two, I can choose 12 of them. This is a Chardonnay, which I wanted to see how they do here in Napa. Because you always hear Napa, Napa, but it's a different story when you're here instead of buying a bottle from the grocery store. I like it, it's quite fresh. Okay, round two, I have some Gewürz Raminer, and let's try what that is like. I like the aftertaste, it almost tastes a little bit like Muscat, like the fruity taste is in the aftertaste. Things are getting a little hectic here. I'm still drinking the Sangiovese, and they're bringing me Zinfandel already. But one thing to say about the Sangio is that it is very acidic and for that reason it is best enjoyed with Italian pasta which tends to be oily and creamy and so on. That way you know you have acid and oil and the two balance out on its own. It's probably a, a harder wine to drink and that's the thing about especially Mediterranean style of food and wine and just the, the way they do things there, they drink with the alcohol and the drinks. They eat with the alcohol and the drinks and that is how they're meant to be consumed. That's one thing that is, there's a tradition around it and they sit down for a long time and just goes on and on and the drinks are matched up with the food and that's how it goes. Mm. It's like a grape juice like with honey added to it. It's so good. It's like juice, the only problem is this is like 15% alcohol, <laughs> so I gotta stop. Yeah, the other problem is you're driving because I've had nine cups of wine. That's fine, I'm done. <laughs> so what's interesting is this is the same kind of wine I started with, the Gewürz Raminer, but this one has been turned into a dessert wine, so I'm quite curious what the difference is here. And I can taste the similarity and the difference, and this is far better than the last one. Wow, yeah. this tastes amazing. All right, now that I'm nice and tipsy, we can go tour the castle. But let's begin in this room, which looks fantastic. Welcome to the great dining room. So I heard the tour guide earlier, she said that it took them over two years just to paint this entire room, which I can see why. Because, <laughs> yeah, you have not only the walls, but you have the ceiling. It's just incredible. 
Yeah, it looks like old Europe and the exquisite part of it. Here looks like they're depicting an epic battle, which is a must in a grand dining room. We're heading over the tower where they have some kind of sieging equipment or rather anti-sieging. It's like uh, not a trebuchet, maybe a trebuchet. It looks also like it would fire the wrong way. <laughs> if this would fire from here, it would fire right onto the castle. Walking through this castle is pretty impressive and it really has me thinking how long it took to be built and what kind of conveniences they had in the modern day to build it compared to back in the day when real castles were built. And this is pretty real, you know, I think it would serve its purpose back um, in the Middle Ages when there were enemies trying to siege you. But I wonder in the modern day how much it costs to build a castle, how long it takes, what is easier for you as a modern builder. Here is a chair for the watchman. The right kind of window so you don't have too much of an opening to get shot in the face with an arrow. Outside the fields look quite like the fields of Tuscany. So yeah, it's very believable. Hi. Is this America? Hi. It's America. Look what you got in America. We got up to the roof level, some serious Assassin's Creed vibes up here. Which, by the way, is one of my favorite games. Not because of the gameplay, but because of the way they model the world. Let's go to the chapel. Yeah, I guess if you wanted to get married in America and your family to still make it without having to pay wow. for tickets. Look at this mural. And That's you can still have a sort of a European wedding crazy. with um, all the torture of the Middle Ages depicted, including the devil <laughs> in someone's mouth. Uh, Seriously? <laughs> That's oh a common God. picture, by the way, in churches. And here's the other side where it's more saintly and the king is out there and all that. But yeah, look at the, the sin part. It's enormous. And the saintly part is way smaller. All right, we are done with our tour of this castle. Impressions? Uh, really amazing. I can't believe that this castle is actually in California because this entire time I would be mistaken to think that we were in Europe. So from now on, our son's first castle will forever have been in California. So it's great that there is such a thing in California. And now that we've seen this, this is our first Napa experience. And I'll come back to Napa many more times because now I know what they're going for, which is that grand European style, which doesn't really exist very much in the world right now. Even in Europe, it's kind of diminishing, it's wilting, and it takes hard uh, effort to sustain it and restore it. So the fact they're building more of it in Napa actually makes me very happy. And I'll come back to Napa just for that experience many more times. Well, we're in the golden fields of Napa. We drove through a lot of the valley. I don't know how long it is, but the whole thing is planted with grapes. Yeah, lots and lots of grapes and a lot of really nice wineries. Not all of them are in that Tuscan kind of Italian style, but quite a few of them are, and they're just really, really impressive in terms of their architecture. That's right, and others are in French style, some are in modern style, some are more American style. Uh, it's kind of like a theme park but the whole mm -hmm. valley for wine and if that's the experience you want it's probably one of the best places I've seen to experience that. Uh, it is very expensive and it is quite exclusive you need reservations everywhere even to pass through the gates of these wineries you can just go in and loiter which is kind of a shame because we want to see them all but you got to pay the premium for that. Yeah, so I would say that they really do that lifestyle well here. They've had like the ambiance. It's not just the wine and the grapevines, but the buildings are just really cool as well as just the overall atmosphere once you would do walk inside of them. With that said, how is the wine? Well, in the one we stopped at with the castle, I thought that you pay more so for the castle than for the wine quality itself because the tasting was more expensive than I tried in other places while the wine actually wasn't as good as the one I had in Sonoma the other day. Uh, however, one wine did impress me a lot and funny enough that was the dessert wine which we bought to take home. And that is just the experience from one winery. There are so many wineries here that we couldn't even try even half of them even if we wanted to. So it is hard to come up with a general opinion for the entire valley but yeah it does make you wonder about you know they spend a lot for the architecture and the ambiance so maybe the wine quality isn't necessarily as good but it's hard to say. Well we'll find out because I think we'll be coming back a lot. I really like the vibe here in particular and it's the closest thing to Europe. Being from Europe I get nostalgic because of all the problems right now in the world. I haven't been back to Europe in three years and I really wanted a piece of it and here I actually get a taste of that. It's a very nice feeling. All right goodbye beautiful little garden house. This was a real treat 
It's a little rainy today, but that's okay because we're heading somewhere where we should not get any rain. Rain should be over for this trip. Yeah, I can only say good things about this lodging. We did not film it extensively because the host does live here. We were in a guest house privately, but the grounds are three acres and they're shared with them. So I don't know if it's okay with them, but great place, little creek runs through it. You get skylights and views of the garden, gated. It's just sweet and dozens of trees. Yeah, highly recommended. You found this on Vacasa? Expedia, Expedia, but it uh, poured okay. me through Vacasa. Yeah, before. it was a total win. Really great kitchen. But uh, yeah, now we are headed to our next destination. On the next episode of California Adventure. We finally made it to the beach. That was so cool. Our first sea otter with a zoom lens on video. And Julian is enjoying being shirtless on the beach. So we were just walking by and we are like, oh look, a seal. Oh, there's two seals. Oh, never mind, there's like dozens of them.